Hello and welcome. Today I have a match sent to me by uh, Zoki5 from the EU server. Uh, he sent me a match where he is in the new tier 10 German battleship, the Agrosse Kurfürst. The reason why I'm sharing it is because, well, it's a very good match or very strong match with incredibly high damage numbers. Uh, one of the highest, probably, at the current moment. I mean, it, it kind of makes sense if you look at this. <laughs> both teams have eight battleships, so you would probably expect both teams to have very high damage numbers. At least uh, much higher than usual, because you often don't get that many battleships. But the other reason why I want to share this is because I, I think I have changed my mind about German battleships. Not so much... Um, like their tier by tier comparison, maybe I would a little bit, but the main thing I changed my mind is how they would perform against other battleships or ships in general. I feel like the German battleships are going to be incredibly powerful, and this includes the Kurfürst and the Gneisenau. Uh, the reason being is that uh, I didn't know for certain that uh, the Kurfürst had turtleback armor. And having turtleback armor makes a huge difference. You know, because uh, I couldn't really know this before because, you know, uh, I never actually fought the Kurfürst because I only got to play her and I never actually encountered one in battle in a way that I could actually fight against it. And like a Yamato. And the reason why I think that this turtleback armor is going to make such a big difference is because um, cyclones are a thing nowadays. And... Um, well, if you meet a Kurfürst at, at 8 kilometers in a cyclone, um, you can't citadel her because turtleback armor at close range. Whereas she can citadel the Yamato uh, if, if she gets, you know, a broadside and stuff. And the other thing is that turtleback armor means that um, the game is a lot more forgiving. So this is why I think a ship like the Gneisa now is going to do a lot better on average than, you know, I originally thought. Because, you know... Usually, when you're in a tier 7 battleship, you're doing fine, you're doing fine, but then you make a mistake and you show broadside to the enemy and you get citadel. In the Gneisen now, it's a lot less likely. They have to fire at you from long range to be able to citadel you. And I mean, yes, people say that, oh, there's a long range sniping meta going on where people do that in battleships, but it's mostly higher tier. And the other thing is that, um, well... People don't actually shoot at the ranges that you would really need to uh, be able to settle these ships, uh, you know, consistently. Like, if the Kurfürst or uh, Friedrich is at like 20 km, sure, your Montana or Yamato is going to settle them no problem. If you hit the ship, but it's really difficult to hit ships at that range because, you know, they can rudder shift and all that good stuff. So... Often you see these standoffs at like 12 kilometers or 14 kilometers and at that range the Kurfürst is incredibly good at tanking damage because well you can't citadel her so well I mean you might uh, if you're incredibly lucky at some point but generally you don't really get citadels on them and the closer range you get the less likely it tends to be so what really will just happen is that those ships will be incredibly good at pushing and, um, you know, tanking. Like, look at this. That Kurfürst took a citadel hit at 16 kilometers, right? Because that's far away. And the Kurfürst was turning in. It, their armor works just like the Tirpitz. It's hard to citadel when you're closer by. But at range, it's not that hard. So this means that the Kurfürst, or, well, the German battleships in general, will be used a lot for pushing and... Other than having torpedo destroyers or carriers, there isn't all that much that's going to dissuade them from pushing all the time. And well, there's a distinct lack of torpedo destroyers and carriers nowadays, at least on the um, uh, EU server. So I, I believe the Kurfürst is going to do very well overall. And well, the stats so far actually support that. The Gneisen nice now isn't doing all that well, but she's doing at least as well as the other German battleships. Of course, it could be that the stats uh, of the ships are, uh, you know, what they are, because uh, very few people have them, and most of the people who have a Kurfürst right now, or probably even the Gneisen now, 
are very good players who probably had like a ton of free experience lying around. You probably don't expect many, um, you know, potatoes to go for uh, unlocking the line, although I guess it might be possible. But um, I feel that that might, you know, be one of the explanations why the stats are so high. But even if you expect the stats to be some a bit lower, they will be at least al almost as good as a Yamato anyway. And, uh, well, I mean, that means that she would be performing better than the Montana. And after I have revised my opinion, I do think that the Kurfürst is going to perform better than the Montana. By the way, I do not really approve of what um, uh, Zoki 5 is doing right now, because he is well, staying at range in the Kurfürst. This is exactly against what I, uh, you know, recommended earlier on. But uh, I guess there are many ships. And you would still take damage if you show broadside. You just won't get Citadel. You, you, you won't get shot for like 40k damage that Yamatos do to each other when, when they are close range. But you will definitely be shot for like, uh, you know, 15,000 or 20,000. Because, uh, well, the big guns do go through the belt armor. And I feel that this turtleback armor is going to uh, make up for all the other issues the ship has. And that, um, you know, carry and, uh, or well, the torpedo uh, protection or lack of it is uh, a balancing factor for the ship. And if you take those into account, the ship doesn't seem as bad at all as it seemed earlier. Perhaps I just, you know, or not perhaps, I just didn't quite know how to play her properly. And I feel that she is going to perform a lot better than I expected early on. I don't actually know why Zoki isn't firing right now. Like, he's just sailing empty. I mean, he, he doesn't get any... Uh, any good targets off, but he isn't shooting at anything at all. And he is spotted the entire time, so... He really was just wasting time there. One thing I did notice that's a bit of a... Um, downside um, to the Kurfürst is that um, the HE protection on her isn't as good as I thought it was. Like, um, I I noticed yesterday when I was playing my Kutuzov that I was getting s like something like 2000 damage salvos uh, on the Kurfürst when shooting at HE even when she had been damaged quite a lot. So, so I thought that maybe that's just, you know, a one-off or something like that. You know, it sometimes happens. But then today I actually ran a whole bunch of tests um, where I essentially took my Kutuzom. I went 12 kilometers from the front of uh, tier, various tier 10 battleships, uh, Yamato Montana and uh, Kurfürst. I only did a few tests, so, you know, it might be a statistical oddity. But what I found is that rather consistently, the Kurfers took the highest amount of um, uh, HE shell damage from 155mm caliber guns. It was something like 40% higher even. So the difference was significant. Of course, uh, you would have to run a lot, a lot more tests to find out whether you know it actually is 40% or less or more. But I, I do believe that it's you know something you should do. I did see a video of um, somebody else also doing tests, but he was doing a bit of a different type of test, so that might, uh, you know, change the uh, result of it, uh, because, well, if you test shooting from the side, that might be different, but then again, how often are you going to be in your um, cruiser where uh, a battleship is going to give you a perfect broadside all the time? Probably not as often, not to mention that uh, he was really measuring uh, how long it took to kill the ship, whereas I was measuring HE salvo damage. Because, you know, the amount of time would vary a lot depending on how lucky you are with uh, getting fires. And as a result, you would have to repeat the tests many, 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 many times over to get like a good average. Because if you get the fire early, that's going to be a significantly higher um, damage per minute value than if you get the fire late. So I really actually do like now what um, Azoki is doing because he's only engaging like this one battleship at a time who he is absolutely devastating. And that's how he killed the Kurfürst. 
but as you saw from the engagement so far, um, she didn't get any, or Zoki didn't get any citadels, but he still had the Kurfürst for like 11 or 12,000 damage. But no citadels again. Whereas if it had been a Yamato, he would have definitely got citadels on the Yamato. Okay, he wants to shoot at Yama. I, I believe Yayo is also the better choice because the Montana or Yamato was starting to turn a wing. But yeah, I, I, I do feel that, um, well, that the Kurfürst is going to perform really well. What I don't really like is that um, I, I, I believe that uh, she is going to um, make other tier 10, especially the Montana battleship. Stay, aw stay further away than before, because uh, that's where the Montana is going to be the most effective against Kurfürst. But it also means that uh, the Montana is likely to camp a lot, and that might not be quite what everybody wants in the meta change. So at this point, uh, Zoki's team is uh, quite far ahead. Uh, the points wise and they have two caps and it doesn't appear that the enemy team is going to be able to get the third one it's interesting that uh, the enemy lexington hasn't gone for zoki uh, because zoki is really alone and uh, well the kurfürst is like the perfect target for uh, a carrier but i guess it is a tier 8 carrier so the lexington might be afraid that uh, the planes just get shot down and uh, there is no uh, resulting damage really. The secondaries of course are good on her but that one doesn't change. But yeah the main thing is the turtleback armor and uh, I believe that she is going to do a lot better than I expected. And uh, well because she also gets something like hydro acoustic search uh, who knows maybe she'll even get uh, nerfed at some point. Because I do feel that, oh my god, 27,000 damage, yeah, Yamato, you, you just got... Well, you didn't really get unlucky, you were really asking for it, because you, you know, you you didn't uh, angle yourself against another tier 10 battleship. But uh, the reason why I think that um, the Kurfürst or, you know, the German battleship in general might get nerfed is because hydroacoustic search on battleships is... Very powerful. It's much more powerful than on uh, cruisers. Because cruisers usually don't want to be, you know, going in first. Because, well, they're just gonna die to the enemy battleships. So you're not going to be using a hydroacoustic search on those cruisers to defend against DDs as, as often. But uh, on a battleship, things are a bit different. You very well might be... Uh, always spotting those uh, DDs with uh, you know, hydroacoustic search. Of course, on the other hand, uh, it's a lot more dangerous for a Kurfers to go up against something like a Shimakaze, but because the Shimakaze performs so poorly overall, it might very well be that um, you know she won't have her natural predators, as they say, because again, carriers are superbly rare and uh, Shimakas don't seem to perform as as well in that, you know, in the general case. Like, she is literally at the bottom of the win rate uh, in uh, tier 10. So, people might not really want to play her as much. It seems that the enemy team has uh, stabilized uh, their losses and they are slowly pushing into B, so they might not lose very quickly. And, uh, you know, you also have to account for the fact that uh, Zoki's team has uh, three battleships, the enemy team has four. Zoki's team does have cruisers though, but it depends on what... Oh my god, another two citadels. Iowa. Nobody is angling against her. What the hell? Like, even... Like, a Yamato would be having a field day at this moment. But uh, this is something that uh, Yamato probably wouldn't be doing as well, because her guns turn a lot slower, so she is less likely to be doing all this maneuvering. Although she is better at the maneuvering part. So, after looking at those, I feel that I'm rather happy with uh, Kurfürst after all, especially now that she has 105,000 HP. 
if she kept that 88,000, I think she still would have been a tad too weak. Or at least not as strong as you would expect. But we'll see how it pans out in the longer run, because again, like I mentioned, uh, the stat changes might just be because, uh, you know, only or mostly good players are going to have her right now. By the way, I don't have her and I'm nowhere near getting her. I would want the Bismarck, but I'm not really there. I didn't have quite enough free experience to uh, go all the way. And I don't really even have the money to buy uh, the Gneiser now to uh, go through. Oh my god. Zoki just found the enemy carrier. Lexington, what the hell are you doing? Lexington, what the hell are you doing? That is so dumb. I mean, the match itself really isn't all that special. It's just, uh, like the main thing of this match. Oh my god, that Yamato ran aground. Wow. The main thing about this match is just that it's battleship heavy and people make the uh, normal amount of mistakes. This time it's just a whole bunch of battleships doing them. And another Citadel hit. These people really like broadsiding her, I guess. Also, I'm surprised that uh, wasn't shouldn't there be Cyclone on this map? Uh, when I originally heard about this match, I figured it was like a Cyclone and Zucky went like all ham or something, but nope. It appears that that's not really the case. Th still though. Damage-wise, it's a pretty spectacular match, and I believe Zaki played really well by, um, you know, turning away at first. It seemed like a bad idea, but uh, at the time, to me, but nope, I, I think it was actually a great uh, decision. Because it meant that he didn't have to face the entire enemy, or half the enemy team at the same time, and could uh, fight a reasonable amount of enemies uh, instead. I believe you just tried to kill secure a burning Iowa, and I don't think it'll work out. Yep, it definitely did not. Shame on you, Zaki, shame on you. Why are you still not killing the Lexington, though? You could have already killed her, like, like many times over, probably, but you kept shooting other things. I guess it's okay. Maybe Zaki just didn't realize it. Uh, you know, you, you do have to account for the fact that the enemy team uh, did have one tier 10 battleship less, though. Gamescom accounts usually aren't very known to uh, be good at um, carrying games, I guess. But yeah, I, I definitely think differently of uh, the German battleships now, especially the uh, Kurfürst. Um, nice now a little bit as well, because uh, the thing with the Gneisa now is that uh, she's tier 7. And you can do all kinds of crazy things with her. While you might not get these crazy damage uh, or consistently high damage matches, what you do probably get is uh, matches where you don't die as often because you are really fast and you can run away and you won't get Citadel from the side. Especially at the ranges at tier, that are used at tier 7 often. So she might perform better than expected. So yeah, um, here's the match. He won the game with some amazing results, if you think about it. Like, look at this. Uh, he made 515,000 credits profit. He got, um, what is that? That's the anti-fire one. Um, I don't remember. Essentially, he got the anti-fire flags, confederate high caliber, and 290,920 damage. This is an insane result. I'm not even sure if I have got a better match in the Yamato uh, so far. Like, I, I haven't really got the, the, this huge battleship match yet, but uh, this is a very strong result. 105 shell hits, 6 citadels, so I guess that one isn't as uh, surprising, but 105 hits. That's quite many consistent hits over and over. And I feel that this is a very good result. Thank you very much for sending it again uh, to me, Zoki, and uh, well, it was definitely an amazing match. Probably a highlight for a very long time for you and, well, anybody else really. 
he definitely carried his team. Although I guess number two being the Zhao is... He did his job as well. But uh, the Montana Yamato are a lot lower and the ones left other than Zoki, the Iowa Tepets and Lexington, they definitely didn't do as well. And if there had been more time, if the enemy team had played slightly better and kept the uh, zones better, I believe Zoki would have been able to finish off the Lexington and maybe even fight the Yamato and got an even stronger result. Regardless, this already was amazing. So this is what the damage looks like. 115,000 to the enemy Kurfürst. And everything else is like 40,000 or 30,000. And uh, he has a really high hit rate. This is uh, over 30%. No, it's over 33% even. A secondary is actually didn't do all that much damage in this game, which is fairly surprising to me. Only like 12,000, but the main guns did a lot. And, uh, well, Zaki performed really well. And again, thanks for sending it in. And here's the experience one. Look at this, 200% daily win bonus. I bet all the other regions are jealous of uh, the EU region right now, because they don't get that. I, I think they don't get that, right? Right? Please tell me I, did I just didn't make a fool out of myself. But anyways, um, yes. So, I uh, I think the Kurfürst is actually strong. Not as bad as I thought. And... Uh, like Nizeno is probably not as bad as I thought as well. Although she performed, like, the main issue I had with her was the inconsistency, not the strength of the ship overall. And I really dislike inconsistency. But anyways, um, I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. L let's go with Tab Extra today. Thank you very much for your continued support and I hope I see you guys next time.